All right, hello everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. This is, was our uh, Lord the Prayer in Aramaic language. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, first of all, I want to say Happy Thanksgiving Day. And actually, I believe that every day should be a Thanksgiving Day for what we have, even if sometime what we have, we think it's bad. Uh, first, I want to say thank you for those who support what I do in every way, in every mean. Many of you really... Uh, uh, help me uh, even sometimes like I feel like I'm just fighting alone but this is because the nature of what I do you know like what I do is not really something uh, many of you can do so uh, the one who help they help in what they can help you know so I appreciate that so thanks you thank you for all those who support us in every way in every mean those who make uh, uh, donation and Patreon. I really appreciate you. May the Lord bless you and bless your heart and your family and your health. Those who support us, download the video, add subtitle, translate to languages. Those who learn and they spread knowledge between their fellow Christians and Muslims and non-Muslims. Uh, for all of us is the fruits of the Lord and the Lord he is expecting us to be delicious fruits. Uh, uh, today I keep the chat on because you know I hope people will behave and I'm not going to tolerate no more anyone he says silly stuff in the text doesn't matter who I will throw you out you know like I noticed lately I'm losing my patience with the stupidity uh, because I think I have too much of it I mean for years and years and years and I was tolerating uh, things and hoping people they will change but you know I look like people they keep being foolish uh, I noticed one of you he posted a, a comment in the chat saying can you explain to me Matthew 22 uh, my friend the best way always to understand any verse in the Bible is to read the chapter not to read he asked about 22 14 uh, this is really disappointing of a Christian he asked about a verse when the verse should not be read, read, should not read the verse alone. If the Lord he want to give you a verse, he will give you a verse alone. The whole chapter will be one verse. But did, but did Matthew chapter twenty two is a verse? So why you say explain to me verse number twenty two? How in the world now we can explain to you verse number twenty two? You know, without reading the chapter. And if you read there, you will see this is a parable. So you, it, 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 it's been taught to you this way, so you understand. So you, you skip the whole parable to say what verse number 14 is, is, you know, is saying. 
simply what the Bible is saying to you, there's many are invited. But in order to be invited, this is the there about a wedding party, or let us say occasion. Everybody is invited. But in order to get inside the party, you have to have the uniform. You have to be qualified. Even though everybody is invited to the wedding. But in order to get in, you have to be qualified like the rest. Who is usually qualified to go in a wedding? Relatives, you know, family, um, friends, close ones, you know, the close, the closest to you. So when they found that this person, he is not addressing like the rest, which means he is not even prepared for the wedding. He is there in no mean. He don't, you know, he's, he's there not for, for celebration. That person will be cast out. So when the, when, the, when the verse says, many they were invited, but few are chosen, will he invite many? But those who inv he invite them, he will filter them. He will filter. So, Many they are invited. The Lord, he said, for he loved the world, he sent his only begotten son to save the world, right? So everybody is invited to the wedding. But if you are not qualified to get in, and what is your qualification? If you read the parable here, he is not prepared. He is not addressed like the rest. And for sure, this is not about the closing. This is about you close yourself with righteousness believe faith uh, a, a true person you know this is why the lord he says not everyone says to me god god will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so many are invited if you are chosen what is hard about it i don't know never never try to read a verse taking it out from the chapter you see he's the, the lord he spoke to them in, in parable for a reason so you might understand easy. He do not need you to be a philosopher. Like, you know, the Muslim, they say to you, you have to understand Arabic. You have to know the, you know, you have to have to tafsir. You have to be a scholar. So if I have to be a scholar to go to heaven, how many scholars there is in, in this earth? With the Christ, you do not need to be a scholar. You can be a person who is a farmer, who do not know how to write, how to read, and you will be with the Lord. This is why he spoke to them in parables. All right? Now, I wanted really people to enjoy this prayer in the morning because I really love the Aramaic prayer. This is how the Lord, he himself, uh, he spoke. This is how himself, he said those words exactly as it's coming from his word. I'm going to play it one more time. Again, this is the Lord the prayer in Aramaic. Enjoy it and I will get my coffee and we will continue.
Amen. So this is the Lord Prayer, and yeah, somebody's saying nice song. Uh, this is not a song, but every prayer to the Lord is a song anyway, if you want to say so. Uh, you see, one of the beautiful things about the teaching of Christ, that he speak to the simple people, and the simple people, they understood him. In fact, the one who could not understood him, it was the rabbi. The one who could not, uh, let us say, uh, the difficulty was with the rabbis, not with the simple one, not with the farmers, not with the villagers. Because the rabbis, they are so proud of themselves. We have knowledge. Who are you? We are the teachers. Who are you? We are the scholars. Who are you? We are the authority. We are the one who judge. We are the one who send people to death. We are the one who controlled the court. Who are you? And the second you became so much proud about yourself, it is the same moment you became a fool. When Jesus, he said to them before Abraham, I am. What the Jews, they thought. It's not, they did not start thinking, okay, we are Jews. We promise of the Messiah. No, they started thinking, okay, well, you are, you are not even 50 years old. So how you can be before Abraham? Normal thinking, normal questioning. Where is your knowledge? What happened? What happened to those who recite the Torah every day? Those who knew it by heart? Uh, so, you know, uh, like the Muslim, they quote for, uh, for us from Isaiah about Muhammad is a prophet, but that verse in Isaiah is about somebody, his heart and his mouth and his eyes and his ears are sealed. He don't know. He say, "I don't know how to read." Why? Because suddenly, suddenly, he do not know the Torah. So, this is the difference between us and them. We follow Christ, who spoke to us in parable, and those parables are very simple, like the one here. Our friend he mentioned, Matthew twenty-two. Uh, if you if you read it, let me put it up. You will see how easy it is. I mean, how is, you do not need to be a professor. You do not need to be have a PhD. You do not need to be anything. Very simple. Matthew twenty two, and Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king, which made a marriage for his son, and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner, my oxen, and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it, and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants, and entreated them spitefully, and slew them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies, and destroyed those murderers, and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways, and gathered together all as many as they found, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then said the king to the servants, 
Bind him hand and foot, and take him away, and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. I mean to that. I mean how simple it is. You see, uh, 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 in Islam, you know, you need tafsir, and everyone give you his opinion. And here, there's no, there's no need for opinion. There's no need. And if you continue reading, you will see what is the garment. In order to be in a wedding, you have to be qualified. And the garment here is to do the will of the Lord. So go to the highway, invite everybody. Asian, African, white, black, all colors, all ethnic, all languages. Invite everybody. All of them, they are welcome. All of them, they, I love them. But if there is one of them, he inserted himself, but he don't deserve to be there, he will be cast out. As simple as that. So this is the beauty of the teaching of Christ. You do not need to be a scholar. You do not need to be a genius. And you do not need to be, you know, and you see, like, I'm not saying there's no scholars in Christianity. You know, there is, like, you know, scholars who know languages and history and etc. But forget about them. We do not need them, really. We do not need the scholars. The teaching of Christ is very simple. I do not need a scholar to understand what Christ is saying to me. Right? Uh... Limited atonement, uh, so uh, some are scared. No, there's nothing to be scared of. You see, uh, I advise you always to read, read, my friend, read. Uh, yeah, if you, if you, if you, uh, uh, if you continue reading the same, you know, you will find that there's people who, in the in the in the Bible, you will see it's there's a verse saying. There's people, if you go as an example to 1 Corinthians, you will see it says there's neither he who plants or he who waters anything, but only God who makes things grow. What does that mean? Well, I, I plant and I uh, put the seeds, and then you are saying only God grows. Yeah, read the rest. The man who plants and the man who waters have one purpose. And each will be rewarded according to his own labor. So, the fruits you do, the fruits you do, as a fruit will be back to you. This is not. This is, will be your reward. And then it says, "For we are God's uh, fellow workers." So there is two purpose of working. There is people who work for their own glory to make money, maybe. Uh, to have fame, to be famous, to be proud. And there is people who work to serve the Lord. So whatever your intention of your work, you will be rewarded, bad or good. So nothing to be scared of. If your intention, as the as the first Corinthians said, neither who plants nor he who water is anything, but only God who makes things grow. The man who plants and the man who water have one purpose and each will be rewarded according to his own labor what is your purpose that would be your reward if your purpose to save the lord to serve the lord then your reward will be from the lord if your purpose to serve the devil <laughs> will get your reward from the devil so uh, in christianity there's nothing to be uh, to 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 uh, uh, to speak about fear for sure we are sinners i'm a sinner i'm not better than any of you i never claim to be anything there's no there's no good but god all of us we knew that anyone he claimed anyone he speak of himself as a holy a person he's a liar you know there's only one holy and even like the bible mentioned the holy the holy uh, uh, prophets and the word holy does not mean really they are perfect it's mean they work in the the walk in the way of holiness, you know. You walk in the way of holiness, but you are not holy. The word holy here is limited uh, uh, to describe your life style. But the only holy is God, you know. 
So be holy like your father. That's what the Bible says. Be holy, be holy. It's a project you are. So the second you start working being holy, you are in the holy, uh, you know, trip. Like I want to be, uh, I'm a, ba a bad person and I want to be a better person. And I decide to do that, but I am still far away from the Lord. So in order to be, in order to, to be, uh, to be holy, uh, there is a first step I have to take and uh, in the walk, in the way of holiness. And then in the heaven, we will be holy. Holy only mean we are pure. We are different creatures. Uh, otherwise, there is no human is holy. Uh, you know, the Muslim, they say to you as an example, they say the Bible says no, uh, God is not a man. No, the Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says God is not a man who lie. Don't cut the second. Uh, secondly, we don't say that God is a man. We say God became a man. Uh, I saw a comment actually in the other day says that uh, the Messiah uh, was a man from the beginning of the time. The word became a man, my friend. The Bible is so clear. The word became a man. So the word became a man. So this is the image of a Christ. So you can say from the moment the word became a man, that is the man. However, we don't care for the image of a man. We care for the value. You see, many people, they are they don't read the Bible. If you read the Bible, you will see it says, uh, you know, like uh, uh, you, you, you swear by the oath, by, by, the, by the throne. But you don't care for the one who sat on it. So many people are like this. They swear by the by the throne of God. But the throne is not important. What is important is who sat on it. So many of us, they turn from understanding to uh, to be just copy paste. They heard somebody throwing by the, I swear by the throne. So I swear by the throne too. And you swear by the throne. But what the throne mean? Is the throne important or the Lord who is or the throne belong to? This is why Jesus, when you read the Bible, you will see he is so deep. He is so, in the same time, he is very simple. So deep, yet he is very simple. So beautiful. You know? Uh, I advise you every day to open a page. You know? A page. Look, you have time to watch your uh, uh, YouTube. You have time. What about we read a page from the Bible? Try to understand it. Very beautiful. You actually will bless your heart, will increase your knowledge, and will make you a better person to behave. You see, uh, you know, a lot of garbage around us, a lot of anger, a lot of things. You watch TV, you get angry. You watch YouTube, you get angry. You see people comment, you get angry. Even you speak to your wife, you know, you get angry. She wants you to wash the dishes, but you don't want her to wash the dishes. But now you are married. And she is in control and what you can do if you don't do it, she will call you her mother, your, your mother-in-law. So what you do, you know, a lot of stress. All right. I'm just joking. But <clears throat> there's a lot of stress around us and you have to relieve yourself. And the best relief is, you know, is a spiritual, you know, medicine will not relieve you. Uh, I mean, there is because the stress is inside you. It's not really mostly. It's not physical. Mostly, it's a stress of a spirit. Spiritually, you are stressed. Mentally, you are tired. You know, uh, too much worry, too much uh, uh, headache, too much responsibility, too much thinking about this and that and tomorrow. So you need a break for yourself. Uh, I'm not really going to keep you long. I just wanted to uh, share my gratitude to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful for those who support us. And by the way, I noticed like, you know, when you used to have a, a super chat in, in YouTube, people, they used to make donation and then they don't, that's it, they stop. And only a few people, they, like I have a huge number of people who subscribe in Patreon, only a few people, they donate. Uh, uh, I'm not sure what the mentality here, why people, they support you on YouTube, but they don't support you there. Not not sure what the point. But anyway, uh, uh, we are we are always have to be thankful. I was thankful when I was cold. I was thankful when I am, uh, I have nothing. I am thankful when I have. Nothing changed. Uh, you know, we go in life through many times, many things, many issues problems and the second you are the second you lose is the is the, is the second you lose your hope 
and how you lose your hope when you are not thankful uh, you see a person who is not thankful he have no life because it doesn't matter what you have you are not thankful appreciation is the key of happiness you see you know like uh, uh, I was watching a video about uh, you know hurricane and flooding flood in uh, Honduras in South America in Philippines you know I, I did the same video showing you different places of a flooding but what get my attention is only the people in the Philippines I mean the guys are walking in the mud and they are smiling I mean, as if nothing happened, he just the guy, he just lost his house. Those are very poor people, you know. This is what they have. They are laughing, they are joking. It's like a, it's like fun. When you lose the spirit, you are lost. A person who smile even when the disaster come, he will live and he will continue and he will do better. A person who sit and he cry. And he said to the world goodbye, he might commit suicide. Why people they do suicide? Because they lost their appreciation. They're nothing to appreciate. And the funny is, most of people who do such an act is people who live in wealthy countries, not in the poor countries. So think about it. You get you are in a wealthy country, you have a you are not worried about food, you are not worried about shelter, uh, even government they pay you uh, a salary if you're not working. And then you commit suicide. How, how strange is that? Because the human being in this place, he lost his hope. There's nothing to live for. He decided there's nothing to live for. He lost his you know, attention, or let us say, uh, reasoning. But if you are a Christian, and you have a hope for the Lord, your hope is not about a house, it's not about it. Your hope is way bigger than this. Your hope is to be with the Lord. So, uh, I'm very thankful. Can we find the churches in Saudi Arabia? No, you cannot. You can find like underground, secret. You know? But you cannot. So, again, I'm very thankful for all of those who help. Uh, I, I, I receive many emails in Patreon for people they care. Like I say, the room is cold. People, they say to me, why your heater is not working? They send me email, says, can we can help? There's a guy even who own a company. He says, I can fix your heater. You know, very beautiful people. I'm really uh, very grateful for those people. Even, I mean, I did not ask them for any help, but uh, this is how, what make life beautiful is to feel that you are part of a family, not just a community, you know. Family, people who have love in their heart and they have no, they don't want any return from you. They don't want anything. They don't, they don't even know you, you know. So, you know, things can be really uh, stressful until you start not noticing things which is grateful, you should, you should be grateful for. Like a woman, she is not happy with her marriage, but she have beautiful children. Be grateful. You have a beautiful family. You have gifts. Even this man you don't like, even this man who's causing a problem, even this man maybe you divorce him, yet he gave you beautiful children. Be grateful. If I ask any mother, are you willing to exchange your kids? She will say no, not with the money of the whole world. So how come you are not grateful then? So be grateful. And the Lord will, will you know, will always uh, give you better. Uh, hope you visit Poland one day. Why not? I will. I will. Uh, you know, actually, every year uh, in the in the winter time, I used to go somewhere, but I don't see. I don't know where to go. I mean, Corona is all over, and we have now Joe. Joe husband became president. Soon they will close everything. Just wait. You know, this guy is crazy. You know, we got an idiot in the. You know, this is the this is our fate in America. We finish with the idiot, we get another idiot, you know. I mean, idiot go, idiot come. Yeah, they never choose something really good. I mean, this is America. I mean, the guy, he say, I'm Joe, I'm Joe Biden's husband. Still, they elect him. Yeah. Welcome to America. Yeah. 
and I would say. So uh, usually by Christmas time or after Christmas, I go somewhere where it's warm. But with this Corona, we don't know. I don't know where to go. No. Corona is something these days. And now there are some people, they were saying, don't take the vaccine. In case you do not know, uh, uh, all airlines, they will start forcing people, if you don't take the vaccine, you cannot fly with us. So if you don't want to take the vaccine, you have to take a donkey. Get ready. <clears throat> all right. No, honestly, in America, we don't choose a president, you know. We don't. You know, they choose for us two, two, two donkeys, and you say, which one of them you want to elect? Choose one. You know, we have one is a mule, and one is a donkey. Both of them, they will kick you. Which one you want? So you vote for the one who will kick you less, supposedly. But we don't have really presidents. You know? No, even even Trump. I mean, you know, I, I, I supported Trump. I voted for him. I will vote for him again if he go, because he's better than them. But Trump is an idiot, too. Trump, in the day of Hagia Sophia, he posted in, in Twitter uh, about a dish of food he ate. I mean, how, what kind of an idiot you are. The whole world talking about taking Hagia Sophia, making it a mosque. And this potato, he posted in his Twitter about dish he ate. As if he heard nothing. And maybe this is why he lost the election. The world is talking about the Armenian being slaughtered and he do nothing, as if he heard nothing. You know? He was so nice to to, 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 the, to Erdogan, the filthy Erdogan. And maybe this is why you know he was punished. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> Abdullah Samir. Yeah, Abdullah Samir is a is a smart person, but at the same time, he's an atheist. Yeah, a smart, a smart atheist, which means, you know, like walk around yourself. We said to him, the Earth is like a globe, is like a circle. He said, well, the circle is a flat. <laughs> Crazy people. Um, <clears throat> Trump has losing almost a month. No, my friend Abu, actually, I, I think uh, Biden will do better than Trump, and already we are seeing the fruit of that. This is why Erdogan is 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 is, uh, is getting ready to be fried. Biden, he will do what he need to do with 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 Erdogan. Uh, already they are lining up against him to teach him how to behave. The lira is collapsing. So Trump, he was nice for Turkey, and. I want him really to be punished for what happened. We wanted we wanted a Trump for many reasons, you know, conservative reasons like uh, abortion, etc. But even when the one we don't want, he won. Still, the one who we don't want, he would do better sometime from the one we want. I will give you an example. I am always against Obama, but in the time of Obama, Obama he emptied the warehouse of the Pentagon, flooding Taliban and. Uh, and the terrorists in Afghanistan. In the time of Obama, our warehouse were empty. More than 300,000 terrorists was killed under the command of Obama, including Osama bin Laden. This is the one I don't want. So, and not only that, if McCain he won, which I wanted him to win, McCain was going to invade Syria, kill the president, make the Mujahideen take over Syria, and all the Christians in Syria will be slaughtered or they will be paying jizya. Thank God McCain did not win, Obama won. Obama, he did not do it. So sometimes you want something and something else happened, the opposite. But even that opposite can be for your benefit, for we choose based on our ignorance of the future. And I believe that Biden in the future, he will do many things out abroad, not, not, not inside USA, is better than uh, 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 Trump. And actually, there's many things Biden he want to do. I wish to have, like he's saying, health insurance. I don't have health insurance. Isn't it a shame that in USA, we are citizens in this country, everybody get aid from USA. We pay aid to Egypt, we pay aid to Saudi Arabia, we pay aid for everybody, but me as a citizen, I don't have the ability to go to hospital. Can you believe it? 
It's a shame. We give aid to everybody, but our student, he have to pay a lot of money to go to school. It's a shame. So if Biden can do that, God bless him. I support that. So we never lose, my friend. We are always winners. And as, I, as a second ago, I was saying, always you appreciate. Always we appreciate. Uh, what you think is against you, it might turn for your benefit. All right. Well, you know, increase tax uh, 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 better than having no insurance too. I mean, uh, a poor person. Many people go bankrupt, my friend, because they cannot go and pay for their cancer. So all you're saving, all your life is gone when you get sick. You know, and how how in the world the most rich country in the world, their citizen they can't go to to a hospital. That is that is sick. How come we have money to give to everybody in the world, right? Biden can allow more mosques, my friend. This is America. You can build mosque as much as you want. What Biden have to do with this? In America, America is a free country. You can build a mosque. You can build a synagogue. You can you can do anything. I can open me myself a mosque now, right now. Okay. Our problem is not opening mosque, my friend. Let them open mosque. What a problem. Don't be limited in your thinking. Let them open a million mosques. Still, the mosque will be empty as long as we are fighting it and we are exposing it. Don't be like the Muslims. You know, the Muslims, they fear you talking. We don't fear them talking. They can talk, we expose what they say. All right? Don't act like them. Don't be like them. Freedom for good is good. You know, open them all. So what? Who is who is who, you, who is uh, stopping you from opening a center to expose mosque? You can do that. This is America. Here we go. I have my center. It's you here listening to me. Don't cry. Don't cry. Don't be don't be childish about oh, open the mosque. So what? Open the mosque. And what Biden have to do with the mosque now? He will open mosque. Right. But remember, there's a hole in the narrative. And Biden cannot cannot close it. <laughs> My friend, those people they come, they go. This guy is he might die next tomorrow. Uh, you know, people come, people go. It, this is normal. I mean, this is a an America, America. You know, politics in America. Many people are kind of foolish. You know, it's one coin have two faces. I mean, that's the whole story. Trump goes, Biden come. You will see tomorrow. You will see Biden playing golf with the, with the Trump. Just wait. You will see them. Just wait. You know, there's there's something they make it in the they make a theater in the front, but in the backyard they are friends. Go and see his pictures with Hillary Clinton or with Bill Clinton. They are friends all their life. He donate for them too. They are friends. Don't worry about it. Yeah. The one the one who burned his blood is is you the poor who you think oh Trump he lost that's it we lost no you lost nothing. Because you want nothing anyway. Uh, but anyway, people they think in a different way. I think in a different way. Maybe you are right. Maybe I'm wrong. Right? Foolish, not foolish. Foolish. What does that mean? I'm not sure. Are you correcting my English now? <laughs> That's good. I don't mind, by the way, people correcting my English. People, they send me messages, say, uh, uh, Christian Prince, you said, uh, I don't know, like many words, you know, I say, like, uh, I say, I wish I can correct him when he is talking. My friend, the best thing about me when I'm reading English is my funny English. You see, what we do here is, is, is uh, we share knowledge, yes, but I'm a person who like to make people happy. And if my funny English make you excited, I don't mind. Make you feel better, that's good. If you feel like, okay, I know English, you don't know, I'm going to teach him. Okay, that's good. You know, no problem. Doesn't, you know, never, those things never like, uh, never make me feel bad. Um, you know, some people, they can be offended, right? Because, oh, I did not say the word correctly. Oh, I do not know even how to pronounce it. So what? I don't know. It's not my, I'm not born in this country. This is not my first language. What a big deal. 
There's people who they are born in this country, they cannot even pronounce words correctly. But to be honest with you, English is very funny, you know? Uh, like if you read any word, I know, like, you know, it's, a, it's really weird, you know? I remember once when the church guy, he took me to, uh, to downtown after the church. Uh, this is the first, like when I came to America, I was, this is a long time ago. Um, after the, the service, he said, do you want to go downtown, show you the town? I was, I'm just new in the city. I said, sure. So he took me downtown. He said, are you hungry? I said, yeah. He said, okay, let us eat, you know. And uh, he said to me, let us eat hot dogs. I was saying to myself, what the, what I did to myself? I mean, from all the church, I came out with this guy. He want to make me eat dogs, hot dogs. And then I said, you know what? I think I'm not, I don't think I'm I'm going to eat now. He said, but you told me you are hungry. Like I asked you, you said you are hungry. I said, you know, I think it's okay. I will eat later. You know, like it's okay. No problem. No, no, no. Let us eat hot dogs. I said, no, 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 no. He said, listen, listen, listen. Okay. Nice to meet you. See you next time, next uh, next uh, weekend in the church. Like what happened to this guy? He just went to run away. He want to feed me hot dogs, you know? Now I was saying to myself, those Americans are really sick. They want to feed me dogs. I came all the way from the Middle East. And the day I arrive, I'm going to eat hot dogs. I mean, I mean, at least make it hot cats, you know. <laughs> so, you know, like uh, when you come to a country and you are not born there and you are out of the culture, simply you, you have a like a you will be shocked with many things you hear and you see like what well, what is that, you know? Uh, like the vice president of George Bush, his name is what? But isn't it? This is a dirty word, you know. So you will not understand. You will look like literally look like a fool because simply, you know, you are you are ignorant in the language and the culture. My English is easy to understand. Yeah, but yours is not. The only English I understand very well is, uh, you know, is Zach and Ike. But by the way, the Muslims they don't complain about Zach and Ike English. They complain about mine. You don't know how to read Arabic. You don't know it. Even Muhammad Mimi, he said to David, I know this is coming. You don't know Arabic. You do not know Hebrew. I suppose to like he is a scholar, you know? Elijah, I mean, God is with us. But the best uh, speaking English person is Zach and I. Brother Ethel, there's a person in the name of Christian Prince. And if you had to give him a question, he had no answer. And I'm going to teach you now. And I'm going to tell you how to speak English. First of all, ask him to pronounce any word. And he will see right away he doesn't know to pronounce it. And the reason he doesn't know to pronounce it because Allah he made him and of course he could not know to pronounce it. Like, what the heck? Zakir, what you just said? Don't ask me what I said. I don't know the best. What, 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 what? Okay, let me, can we open that umbrella now? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. And you know, if you speak Arabic, they say to you, do you know Arabic? You say to them, yes, you say your Arabic is bad. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, I think we have enough for to, uh, this morning. I'm drinking my coffee and uh, <clears throat> you are confused. <laughs> confused about what? <laughs> your opinion about people speaking tongues as bible many people claim they do this now actually i have no comment about this maybe it's true maybe it's not i don't know but if you speak tongues and nobody can understand that's mean you are not speaking tongues you know what i mean if somebody speak tongues tongues is what mean languages so if you start saying blah 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 this is not tongues as an example, I don't know Chinese. So if I am suddenly speaking Chinese, that is a miracle. That is a speaking tongues. But somebody making blah, blah, blue, blue, how are we, we, that's not tongues. Are you getting my point? Tongues mean languages. Which language you speak? No, what, what you said to me, what is that? What you said to me? In which language is that? So if this language does not exist, that's mean you do not speak tongues, you are just playing games. Are you getting my point? This is how I understand it. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <clears throat> Am 
Maradona pass away. So, I mean, who care about this Maradona? What's wrong with you, Maradona? I mean, millions of people passing away every day. This is what you worry is Maradona. Who is Maradona? The Holy Foot? Maradona, they'll pass away. Are you serious? No way. I'm going to close right now. What happened? Maradona, he passed away. That's it. Our life is stopped. Maradona. Who is Maradona? Actually, human beings became so stupid to the point they became ball worshippers. You know, you see people killing each other, literally, slaughtering each other for the sake of a little game. This is how silly human beings become, you know? We have millions of people dying. We have millions of people have no food, no, no, no shelter, no, and we are worried about Maradona, who is a millionaire. And now because you are Maradona, they will make a big funeral for you. The whole world will be crying. How come they don't cry for children who they are dying everywhere? Why we cry for Maradona? For what? He was worshipped for all his life. For what? For playing stupid football. He don't even have high school. You spend your life working like a donkey. And then Maradona, by using his foot for two seconds, he get salary more than what you will make all your life. In five minutes. A human being is a fool, my friend. Maradona. You open the news. I have a news app, you know. Uh, all of it is about uh, football. I mean, I wish I can delete those things, but they, are, they come in my... They, they are disgusting. The the girlfriend of the... What his name? Fisi, Misi, Suisi. She said this. She posted her picture. I mean, what this is? What is this about? I mean, why I want to care? I mean, for girlfriend of the guy, not only him, now the girlfriend... The girlfriend of this guy, she appeared with a bikini. This is the news? This is our news. What happened to this earth? I mean, really, a human being became so silly, so stupid, so shallow. His girlfriend, she posted a picture of herself in the bikini. What was the title? The title is big, like took my, the half of my app. In her bikini and what she did what uh and she did like it's something like not not right i mean those people they do something right supposedly she is a girlfriend sleeping with the guy this is right and doing the, the bikini is not right i mean you see like she did something not right like come on you know unbelievable yeah or like in news about uh what her name, this woman she married from this uh, stupid prince in England. You know, every day, every day, every day. This woman, she said, the woman, she waved her hand. The guy, you know, from the, uh, the uh, he is not appearing for two days. I mean, what, what is this news about? This is news to keep you busy with stupid. They have nothing to say to you. They are assuming that you are a fool and it's time to fool you. We will give you a lot of fool news. What you get from this garbage? Nothing. Right. What about Armenian? You see, my friend, Armenian. I I feel sorry for them, but it's it's a uh, in the Middle East we have an Arabic statement. It says, "Your mouth blow it, and your hand tie it." For what? There's two guys who are crossing the river, and they have a they make like a a vest from leather, and they fill it with air. So one of them. Both of them, you know, they, they fill the, the, the leather thing with air and they tie it up in the middle of the river or the lake. One of them, his leather start leaking. He did not tie it good. So the other, other person, he said to him, your mouth did blow it and your hand did tie it. This is what happened in Armenia. The Armenian, they've been fooled. Their leader are stupid. And they were so proud that they can be always victorious. They did not prepare themselves for what's coming. And then even three months, four months before the attack, the Azerbaijani, the, the Turkish, they bring their army. They bring, I mean, everybody knows it's coming and they did nothing. So what happened in Armenia is a big lesson for Armenian. Number one, don't depend on others. Number two, don't wait for people to protect you. Number three, prepare for war. And the most important thing, uh, don't 
elects chipet leaders because leaders can destroy countries uh, cp are you interested to learn about bible code well bible code uh, it's a very interesting thing but i don't believe i need it what i need is my faith not a code but if you are if that if you are interested you know good for you uh, anyway uh, are we done how your ancestors I don't talk about my ancestor but they survive by paying jizya you know paying jizya paying money to live to the gang of Muhammad right you see everybody have his interest in things like in, when you read the Bible if you're interested in uh, coding and etc okay no problem you know increase your knowledge study that's that's good actually I encourage it but uh, there is there is the, the what is the important is the same as the Lord he said to the women who was busy in her house she doesn't know what to do because she is so happy to have him in her house so he said to her Martha Martha uh, 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 like you're busy with many things but the important is one the important is one and this is what people do they start focusing on things and they forget what is important they swear by the oath by the they take an oath by the throne of God but they forgot that the important is God on the throne not the throne uh, <clears throat> try to be a, a, a you know more deep person uh, otherwise The shallow wave will will take you away, you know. And we have enough shallow uh, things around us. Uh, talk about the Ten Commandment. I do not need to talk about it. Ten Commandment is known. You practice it. You don't talk about it. You see, there's no, there's no need to talk about commandment if you know them already. What, what I will tell you about them? It says, don't do this, don't do that, don't do it. Just you know, right? It's not time to talk about them. It's time to do them. To talk about them two thousand years ago, three thousand years ago, you will keep talking about do them. Uh, did Muhammad have children his own? No, he never had children. Most of them they claim that he have children and they die. That's not true. Yeah, actually, I I should today go in the quality of life, but you know, uh, people will not know that I am. Many people they are not subscribing there. Anyway, any other things, guys? Before we go, uh, if you go to church, you know, pray for everybody, for the health of everybody. I pray for all of you. Uh, I pray that the Lord, He will provide us, protect us. And even the bad time, uh, sometimes even bad time can be good, you know, can make you stronger. You know, in my experience in life, that people who grow in a poor society, uh, but yet their parents were good parents. They maintain them, you know, they guard them. Uh, they taught them what is right, what's wrong. Those children will be way better in life and successful from children who grow in a, let us say, uh, maybe wealthy family or have a better life, but their parents are lousy. They don't care. They never taught their children manner. They never taught them how to appreciate. So the children who, who, who grow in a poor family, but he learned the good manner. He, when he grow as a man or as a woman, the first thing he will do, he will learn how to appreciate for what he was and what he became. A child who is born, he have a bread in his table, he have fancy cheese. His family, they want to force him to eat. And he say, no, I don't want to eat. Come on, eat. No, I don't want to eat. This kid, he will be a screwed person. He will never be successful.
because he never learned since his childhood that what he have in the front of him, many people, they dream to have it. So if you are a person who have a children, teach your children in an early age that what you have is something you have to appreciate. Let your children watch videos about poor children in Africa. What they have, let him see. This guy, he never saw it. He think the whole world have games like him. He have a TV for his own. He have a room for his own. There's people, they have 10 kids. They live in one room and the room is not even in the size of a bathroom. If you don't teach your children how to appreciate, you will pay the price. They will not appreciate you too. And soon they will start saying the F word to you. And I heard it many children saying to their parents, F word, believe it or not. Why obviously the parents don't deserve to be parents because how you allow your son to, to reach that point. Unless you are the person who made him this way. So not everyone can be a parent. Not everyone can be a mother. Not everyone should be a mother or be a father. If you don't, if you are not qualified to be a father or a parent, don't have kids or children. We do not need more idiots in this earth. The Lord, he said, from their fruits, you shall know them. And the fruits will decide who you are. I want to say thank you guys again for being here. Again, thank you for those who support us in Patreon. Special thanks for them. Uh, you know, we are giving our books for free and uh, in all languages. And that make, uh, make uh, things harder on us. But I, you know, I'm a believer. And I believe always the Lord, He, uh, He support, He will provide, and uh, in His, uh, uh, let us say, under His umbrella we live. So we pray that the Lord will provide to all of us, support all of us, and move hearts, help those who you need help around you. Uh, today is thank Thanksgiving Day, but don't be thankful only for yourself. Be thankful for having good people around you and support the good ones. If you have a relative, he needs some help, help him. If you know somebody, a neighbor, he is poor, he needs something, help him. Because one day you might be poor yourself and nobody help you because you were selfish and now everybody is selfish like you. So those who they uh, 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 think of others, others will be thinking of them. Those who don't, nobody will remember them. And this is what will happen exactly in the Day of Judgment. Many, as a, the person who quote for us from Matthew chapter 22, many, they will be invited to the wedding, but many, they are not ready. Few are ready. So be ready, my friend. Wear the glory uniform. And the glory uniform is how much glorious things you did in your life. How much good things can be remembered for. All of us, we will die. The Lord, he said, let the dead bury the dead. All of you are dead, including me. All of you, including me, remember that. So there's only thing you will be remembered for is things you did. Otherwise, you are not exist. There's two things people remember you for. Either, either you're evil or you're good. Choose one. It's your choice. Again, thank you very much for being here, my friends and my family. I love you all. I appreciate you. And I pray that we will be able maybe today, maybe after a few hours, I can go live and have a topic. But this is just a video. And this is why I opened the chat, you see. And uh, uh, we are closing the chat in during the topic about Islam. As if you notice, we are not closing our videos because the chat is horrible. So we are closing the chat during the topic which is about Muhammad and his madness. Uh, but for now, we have a nice conversation, so we open it. So I want to say thank you again. And I close uh, uh, my my video for today again with the, with the Lord of Prayer, which we heard in the beginning. I really love it. I love uh, the words. I love the meaning. And it's very, very, uh, uh, let us say, uh, touching. One of the things in the Lord of Prayer is forgive to us the same as we forgive to others. In the day of Thanksgiving, what about we forget to others what they did to us? 
Forgiveness, my friend, is not only for the benefit of your one you forgive, it's for your benefit. The most evil thing can happen to you is hatred. Hatred will kill you before it kill your enemy. So get rid of your hatred. Forgive, so you will be forgiven. Give, so you will be given. Invite, so you will be invited. That is the teaching of Christ. Thank you, and God bless you. Take care. Thank you.